Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Transportation Congress will come to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Alderman Moore. Alderman Vaccaro. <laughs> Alderman Cohn. Present. Alderwoman Howard. Present. Alderwoman Ingracia. Present. Chairwoman Crewson. Here. Four present. You have a quorum. Perfect. Um, we have four board bills before us this morning. Right? Madam Chair, may I make a recommendation? Can we uh, put one of the board bills before us and take a vote so we can get Alderwoman Ingracia on the record? Okay, sure. All right, so okay. um, what we're going to do here, if we can, is we're going to uh, vote to put Board Bill, Bill 253 before us and uh, then hopefully be able to use a previous role unless someone objects to that approach. I, I do not. No. Okay, the chair would entertain a motion. I move that we put Board Bill 253 before us. Second. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Alderman Moore. Ald Alderman Vaccaro. Alderman Cohn. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Ingracia. Aye. Chairwoman Cruz. Aye. Four aye vote. Perfect. Okay, thank you. There's another hearing going on that some folks have to go to. I think these bills are pretty simple. So, um, Board Bill 253. Rhonda, you want to introduce everybody and uh, then talk about Board Bill 253? Sure. Uh, I'm Rhonda Homnebri, the Airport Director. Antonio Strong is the Deputy Director for Finance and Administration. I think most of you have met him. We also have Mario Pandolfo. Mario is our attorney at the airport. Uh, Rob Salerano is our, our manager for properties, and Jean Tiemann, uh new title, Jean. <laughs> Assistant manager of properties. Properties, okay. Uh, we have a changing Jean's role all the time. Uh, so this is our team, and everybody's got uh, the ability to answer any questions. With that, I'll let Antonio present. Uh, this board bill is for the sale of 0 .674, 674 acres to Kenlock. Uh, this is based on a fair market value of 22220 uh, this would be executed by a quick claim deed uh, to Kenlock. St. Louis and Kenlock must also satisfy various covenants and conditions during this due diligence period and obtain necessary approvals in regard to the respective obligation, including the FAA release of the St. Louis property. Uh, now, we're two years into our five-year strategic plan, and within that five-year strategic <laughs> plan was a, a financial commitment uh, or initiative to obtain value from underutilized land. This is one of those uh, situations where this is underutilized land. It is not, it is nowhere near the airport. So, like, well, here's the airport. This land that we're talking about is somewhere in this area. So it does not abut up to the uh, area of the airport. So it has very little value to the airport. So for us to obtain some type of value or, or cost from this is, is excellent. So this is just part of our strategic initiative to uh, obtain value from our underutilized land, and we would like to request your approval. And Antonio, we, we got this land through the noise mitigation yes. buyout some 25 years ago, right. or whenever it was, correct? Right. Okay. Right. And in addition to that, it is a very small portion, obviously, it's, it, and it's amidst other land that we don't own, so this particular little parcel doesn't even butt up right. to some other properties that we own. It's kind of a Caddy cornered in there. We also did have uh, appraisals, fair value, fair market value appraisals completed. And there is a second bill that will be coming up next for another similar parcel. And I mean, not not that it matters to us, but Kinlock's going to use this to build a new city hall on it. Whether this they, one, both of them. Oh well. Whether they need a new city hall or not is not before us today. So there you have it. Let's <laughs> not judge. That's right. There you have it. Uh, so, are there any questions? Okay. Alderman Cohn? Yes, uh, and I'm going to ask this because I've been on this committee for, I believe, eight years now, and I know that this has been uh, a relationship that's been you know, brought up many times before, mm -hmm. the relationship between the city and the city of, Ken the city of St. Louis and the city of Kenlock. Um, and I know some of my other colleagues who are not present today would probably be asking this question, and I, I already know the answer, but you know, many of them have taken the position that if there is any land, that we just give it back to the city of Kenlock which I know from previous conversations, you know, because of federal requirements right. that were required Correct. to have fair market value, you know, assessments done and sell property for the fair market value. So I just want to ensure that 
like we've had that conversation yes. with the city of Kenmont, they're aware of it and they're in favorable agreement of this as well. Yes, uh, we have had that conversation. They're well aware that uh, the FAA would not approve this sale of land if we were not getting fair market value for it. So they wouldn't approve it, which means we couldn't make the sale anyway. We've had those conversations. They're well aware. They understand that. They're not pushing back right. on, um, on that. Wonderful. That's the only question I have. Uh, Alderman Howard. So these are five parcels. Were they formerly residential? They're, again, they're, they're bits and pieces. There might have been. Are a they scattered? Yes. Oh. Well, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. The parcels that we're selling are the joint. If oh, you think okay. of it as a three parcels and they're literally uh, by each other. So. Okay. Uh, and yeah, because they have almost contiguous but, numbers but, here. But, but for us, they're not considered. <laughs> You know, it's not like mm -hmm. this is part of property but it's not that we own. Right. Right. Other right. property right. that we own. You'd have and to And we have all these, yeah, yeah, isolated little parcels, which is really difficult for us because we got to still cut the grass and right. we have to be worried about dumping and all the costs associated with this. I mean, just there's nothing like else to avoid the cost mm -hmm. is a good reason to sell it. Yeah. So this is, this is in the best interest of economy to sell it and for maintenance purposes allows you to focus on running an airport rather than right. absolutely mowing lawns <laughs> okay all right just to be clear um, that's all the questions I have and then we're going to realize that the price was done through pr appraisal mm -hmm. and it seems minimal to me 22,000 about how much acres is this that's point six seven four is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay okay all right that's all I wanted to know thank you very much mm -hmm. uh, be happy to have a motion. I move that we pass Board Bill 253 out with the due pass recommendation. Second. Previous roll. Any objection to previous roll? Hearing no objection, Board Bill 253 passes out with the due pass recommendation. Um, okay. Next Board Bill is Bill 254. Uh, as Alderwoman Krusen uh, mentioned, is this is similar. This is 1.076 acres that we will be selling to Metropolitan Church. Um, and again, this must sat satisfy various covenants and conditions during the due diligence period prior to the closing. And it must also, we must obtain the FAA's release of this property. Uh, the sale amount is 43,182, based upon a fair market value and appraisal. Um, and at this time, we would like to request your approval. I move that we, oh, <laughs> I was just any trying to questions? make a motion, but we move it, uh, no, no questions. Alderman mm -hmm. Howard, any questions? This is the same situation? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. no questions. Can we make a motion that we move, uh, Second. To, move to the passport bill 254 out with a due pass recommendation? Second. Previous roll. Any objection to previous roll? Hearing <coughs> none, uh, board bill 254 passes out with a due uh, pass recommendation. Okay, board bill 255. Uh, this is a second amendment to the lease agreement that the airport has with JetLinks St. Louis LLC. JetLinks is a general aviation operator on the south, southwest corner of the airport. Um, the second amendment is effective February 1st and increases their premises. JetLinks is adding approximately 96,000 square feet of ramp space uh, to, their, to their premises. It increases the annual rent from $90,000 to $121,919 uh, to pay for the extra premises. Uh, there's no change to the term, which expires October 31st, 2023, and we respectfully request your approval of the Second Amendment. Um, are there any questions on Alderman Cohn? No questions. Alderman Howard? No questions. I move that we pass Board Bill 255 out with the pass recommendation. We're requesting a board approval of an assignment and assumption of interest in dual customs agreement. This is consent of the city of St. Louis uh, to, for Brownsville International Air Cargo to assign their interest in a dual customs and agreement to buy National Gateway Terminal. Uh, right now, the city and BIAC have a dual customs agreement in place wherein BIAC has the rights to set up a dual customs facility at the airport 
for United States Customs and United Mexican States Customs agents to inspect customs bound for, for, to and from Mexico. Uh, this agreement is consent for the city to assign the rights under that to buy National Gateway Terminal and by National Gateway Terminal is the lessee of the Northern Track site, approximately 61 acres, and they're able to accommodate the, the dual customs facility within their leasehold. We're requesting board approval of this consent. Any questions? No questions. Alderman Howard. What is this being used for now? Uh, the northern track right now is under construction. It's under lease. Uh, it's the old Boeing facility on the northern track. And it's these buildings right here. And right now they're just getting ready to start construction and, and uh, to begin uh, remediation of the site. And the that'll, site. that'll be Brownsville or we're doing that? Or you're doing that? That's, they're doing it. So By it's a private, yeah, it's a yeah. private development. It's for our cargo warehousing and our ability to, to bring air cargo in, warehouse it, and then transport it out via truck on the building. So that particular agreement was one that we entered into about a year and a half ago, maybe a little bit longer than that for this development agreement. Um, it's a three-phased agreement over 40 year lease, 20 with two 10-year options. So we were initially going to have this over in the Cargo City area, which was just to the east of where Southwest Terminal is, but it makes more sense to have this in the development that's in the larger portion. So, so this is a lease agreement, correct? It's so an amendment to the yeah, assignment, yeah. I'm not sure I understand. You want to explain you? Um, we, we first entered into a, a, an agreement with a company called Brownsville International. We call them BIAC. Mm -hmm. And really it was, if, if he could get dual customs to come here, a pilot program to the federal government, mm -hmm. if we could get that, that we would, he would have two obligations. One is to build the facilities that he would need to house this, this. Mm -hmm. And he would then have these rights if and this would be triggered by the pilot program being established. Meanwhile, he decided to, the same principal, Ricardo, decided to uh, go forward even though before the pilot program. He, he believed and he could get cargo coming in here and he wanted to enter into a long-term lease, so he created a different company. Okay. The company did not have the rights to buy national, to, to, not, not the rights to do dual customs, but to do cargo in general and the right to accommodate his other company uh, rights a to do custom. To do that, contingency. Now what's happening is it's the same principal owners of both. So he formed, when he did the Northern Track development, mm -hmm. it was a Missouri corporation he established. And he did so smartly because that way it would be easier for him possibly to get credits or tax mm -hmm. advantages. So meanwhile, now he's finding, his, now time for him to transfer these rights to the Missouri Corporation um, because that will help maybe he be able to get uh, tax advantages, some incentives, remediation, yeah. to help him with the remediation and whatever. Okay. So he came to us and said, I'd like to assign my rights that I own under my company, Brownsville, and I want to assign them to my company that I own called Binational. And we said, fine, we're not releasing this company, they're still on the hook. Mm -hmm. And now we have, in essence, two companies on the hook. Okay. So if anything, we're stronger than before and it accommodates him. So it was for us, it was it was very easy to no yeah. And it, it might be a step toward actually getting dual customs. We hope. Right. <laughs> Which is, you know. Okay. Huge. Yeah, Huge. I, I, I by know. that you mean customs coming in and outbound. Right. Yes. Or freight. Or freight. freight. Just for freight. freight. So, for Mexico. So right. this right. way, Mexico the plus side is, we'll should we get a pilot program? Right. Should we get, get a pilot program, he'll be able to show the, the Mexican government now, not just that he has an MOA where he has his right, provided he builds, he accommodates it. Now he can say, here, I have a lease. Mm -hmm. I own, I control this property, property. and that'll yeah. probably I help. Have place to, I actually to have store under to, my control. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so it, it enhances us. Yeah, so it's step another forward. step. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just kind of wanted a better understanding. Sure. Um, thank you. That's all. Sure. I move that we pass Board Bill two fifty six out with a due pass recommendation. Second, previous, previous roll. roll. No, hearing no objection to previous roll, Board Bill 256 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for accommodating this morning. Good luck with the rest of your day. Yes. <laughs>